So, the present topic is performance and aesthetic enhancement by finishing process. The property of the fabric or the characteristics of the fabric can be changed by appropriate finishing treatments and therefore, a designer should have some understanding about this particular aspect that what are the various finishing treatments which are available and how these treatments can change the properties of the fabric and therefore, the properties of the product. Most of you have been taught the finishing process in much details. We are not going to discuss the finishing treatments or chemical processes or the chemistry aspect of the finishing in details. No, that is not the purpose. The purpose is just to know what properties can be manipulated by the finishing treatments. So, that some understanding about this should every designer should have. So, let us see what are the purposes of finishing. What we see? To improve the appearance of the fabric and appearance is connected to aesthetics. So, when you say I have to enhance the aesthetic value of a product, then here there is a way to do it. So, to improve the appearance of the fabric by what? By removal of impurities, oil stains and waxes, sizes, all of them can be removed properly through some finishing treatments. The other thing is reduction in pill formation and reduction in hairiness. We will see that the peeling tendency of the fabric can spoil the aesthetic look of a product and therefore, there may be a lot of customer complaint which may be coming that this product is not good within you know, few days of use. I find lot of balls on the surface of the fabric such kind of complaints will be always coming in case the fabric that has been used to produce the product is not really of right quality. So, the peel formation can be reduced with the help of finishing treatments. The other thing is hairiness. Hairiness also can spoil the appearance of the fabric. The fabric will look very, very bright, very lustrous if it is less hairy. This is true especially for cotton. So, here there is a way to deal this issue. Next one is to add new performance characteristics as I can enhance the characteristics, the performance related characteristics of the product by finishing treatments. And what are those characteristics? These are one is wrinkle resistance, flame resistance, then hydrophobicity or it could be hydrophilicity also, then handle of the fabric, soil resist, all of them are important for certain product and uh, we should know that there are certain finishing treatments through which we will be able to improve the performance. Now, fabric finish, the nature of the finishing treatments could be either mechanical or chemical or thermal. There are three different processes, mechanical finishing treatments, chemical and thermal. The type of finish could be preparatory in nature called preparatory finish or they could be performance enhancement finishes. Preparatory finishes are sometimes is important from the point of view improvement of suppose the diability of a fabric. In that case, 
we go for scouring and bleaching treatments. So, there are certain treatments which will be prepared in nature and some are the final ones where it will directly influence the enhance or the performance of the of the product. Performance, which type of performance? We have already discussed a bit about them. Now, we will know a little bit about the various mechanical treatments to start with. The first one is singeing, most of you are familiar with. We are not going into details of the singeing machines, how it is done, what are the process, no. Let us say process details has been given in a very brief. In case some of you have not gone through this course, then little idea about the process should be useful for them. So, the second column actually gives you the process in a very, very short statement. Now, look at the benefit part, which is really important to a designer. So, the changing is directly related to aesthetics. By changing treatments, we can get a very clean and lustrous look of the fabric. So, this is a very common treatment which is given to the cotton fabrics very well. So, the generally they are suitable for cotton, not suitable for thermoplastic fibers, because there is a chance of fibers to melt because of the temperature. And uh, it is also not suitable for woolen fabrics, because there is a strong sulfur odor which will be created. So, mostly it is applicable to cotton fabrics. The other treatment is raising, that is we try to raise the fibers from the surface of the fabrics. So, it is also there are some rollers through which we try to raise the fibers from the fabric surface that is basically from the yarns actually. And uh, by doing so, what we get that means in the raising treatment, we are actually generating a lot of hairs on the surface of the fabric. Singeing is to bring down the number of hairs to give a clean look. In some cases, we may need a fabric where we need a lot of projecting hairs for some other purpose. So, by doing this, we get a softer feel of the fabric and it can also lead to less contact between the skin and the fabrics contact area can be reduced. In some cases, this may be helpful and it in a way helps in trapping the air that is it improves insulation. So, there are a lot of raising done especially for those fabrics which are used for insulation purpose. The next one is shearing. So, shearing is the removal of short hairs from the surface face of the fabric and uh, we want to make uniform piles that for creation fabric like velvet and plush fabrics. So, if we want this kind of fabric where there will be a lot of projecting, projecting out fibers on the surface of the fabrics, we want to get a you know, velvet look. We all know the velvet fabrics. If you run your hand on the bevel leg fabric, you will find it is very, very smooth. So, very touch of the fabric is very, very pleasant in nature. So, it gives a very clean, lustrous look from aesthetic point of view and from a hand point of view also, you will find that when you touch a velvet fabric and try to run your finger on the fabric, you will feel that it is very, very smooth and very, very pleasant in nature. So, that is the advantage that we get by doing by having this treatment. The next one is calendaring or embossing. So, this is another treatment and what it does? It improves the appearance by making the fabric surface very, very smooth. So, if we want to make the surface smooth, then this is the treatment we give or we can go for embossing, where you want to create certain amount of some floral effect, some design effect on the fabric's surface, then also embossing can be done. 
the other one is splitting it is done to create permanent creases see there are certain fabrics where or certain products you can say where permanent crease is required like trousers in some trousers formal trousers to be used as a suiting material a very neat crease is very very important there so it improves the definition of the crease it gives a smooth appearance that is the purpose of pleating then comes decatizing this is steam pressing mostly used for wool and it also improves the appearance and dimensional stability of the fabrics so that means the treatment has a direct effect on aesthetics value of the final product it's covering probably most of you are very much familiar with this this covering treatment is to remove all sort of impurities from the surface from the fabrics and it could be a while it could be wax it could be other types of you no know, uh, impurities which are there in the fabric so in a way if we remove them we improve the aesthetic value of the fabric so this is also a direct consequence on the aesthetics part of the fabrics then comes bleaching bleaching basically means to remove any color which may be there so as a result removal of color material from natural fibers will give you a very consistent dye uptake so most of the cotton fabrics will be always bleached before they are actually taken for dyeing so bleaching is essential to improve the dyeability of the fabric or to give a color to the fabric which will look very uniform so it is also enhances the aesthetic value of the product then comes mercerizing mercerizing can affect fabric mechanical property like slag mercerization will result in thicker stronger and elastic fabrics it will give a lustrous look in the case of cotton fabric also is possible and aesthetic and mechanical properties like tension mercerization if we do it leads to smoother and lustrous fabric and there could be significant increase in strength there so this lustrous part is basically because of tension mercerization this will be a part of here this part is not because of slag mercerization this is because of tension mercerization other than that there is a chance that the fabric strength can also increase because of tension mercerization it will also improve the absorption property of the cotton fabrics so these are the advantages of mercerization treatment another treatment is called carbonizing which is mostly done on wool and the degumming techniques are also there which is generally used for silk fibers and as a result what we get it enhances the aesthetic value of wool fabric or silk fabric because by this we can remove the vegetable matters from wool fibers so ultimately so many techniques are there through which we can enhance the aesthetic value of the fabric by making it look lustrous or sometimes we can improve certain performance by generating more hairs on the surface of the fiber fabric or by enhancing strength of it so these are the uh, uh, ways to improve the performance other than this the performance enhancement finishes which are specifically there there some treatments where do we want to improve the some specific performance 
one of them is first one is moisture management. So, this is a term which is very popular nowadays. We want to produce moisture management type of fabrics that is what does it mean? It basically means there are three aspects of this and these are water repellency or water proof or an hydrophilicity. So, these kind of finishes can either make the fabric water repellent because we need suppose uh, some type of fabrics which are used when there is lot of rain, then the fabric should not allow the rain drops to pass through. So, we need water repellent fabrics there or you may need sometimes water proof fabric like umbrella cloth is an example. Hydrophilicity may be sometimes also important that is we want to impart a finish through which we be able to absorb certain amount of moistures. Some fibers are there which are very very hydrophobic in nature or their moisture contained moisture is very very low. So, for these fibers if we want to improve their moisture capturing capability then hydro Philic type of finish can be used. The other one is oil repellent and stain resistance finishes are also available. Then thermal management anti static finishes are there, flame retardant finish is also there, anti microbial finish is also there, like today's for musk development and all antimicrobial finishes are important for socks, for inner garments, might antimicrobial and maybe anti bacterial or antiviral finishes are also important. Then durable press finishes especially for cotton fabrics and overall hand can also be improved then surface roughness of a fabric can also be manipulated. There are some finishes for that. So, there are the, so therefore, there are so many performance enhancement finishing techniques are available and various types of performance can be enhanced depending upon where this particular fabric is going to be used and what kind of garments or maybe uniform we want to make out of these fabrics. Accordingly, the fabrics have to be treated with a specific type of finish. So, some little you know, some discussion on the this this kind of finishes which are there, advantage disadvantage we have just listed like paraffin wax is very economical, but it is non permanent in nature. It can easily rubbed off and dissolve in dry cleaning fluid. Silicon water repellent finishes are there, silicon is very much used and they are durable in nature, they are resistance to abrasion. So, uh, there is some advantages are listed here and some disadvantages are listed the third column. Fluorochemicals are also used for entry uh, water repellent type of fabrics. So, and it also they can also on the top of it, it also makes the fabric uh, resistant to some amount of uh, no, oils and other type of stains. So, fluorochemicals repels water and oil both that is the advantage we have with floor chemicals. They are durable in nature and they improve soil disease, but the disadvantage is that they are costly. That is the disadvantage with fluorocarbons. But depending upon the end use, we have can choose one of them to make the fabric resistant to water or resistance to water and oil. The other important thing is the water related and waterproof fabrics 
there are great demand for such type of fabrics. There is a you know, we should have some idea about the water repellent fabrics, waterproof fabrics and waterproof and breathable fabrics. This is what is very important now because it should not only be waterproof, it has to be breathable also. So, rain coats are there which are or we can say the cold weather clothing which are used, they have to be waterproof at the same time they have to be breathable. So, there are many applications of such type of fabrics. Let us try to see the you know a comparative statements of these three types of fabrics are there in this particular table. What we see here, if we discuss features like pores, then water repellent fabrics, the pores are relatively open. Waterproof fabrics, they are all filled, therefore, they are non breathable. So, waterproof fabrics will make the person to suffocate because all the pores. So, anything that is coming out from our body in, in the form of uh, your uh, vapor that we you know producing continuously from our skin, the vapor will not be able to escape. So, therefore, it becomes non breathable in nature. And, uh, but in the case of waterproof breathable fabric, they are partially filled. There are very fine pores through which the moisture can escape. So, resistance to water doublets, water repellent fabric resistance to wetting, waterproof fabrics is very highly resistant to wetting and waterproof fabric also highly resistant to wetting. So, all of them are basically these two are highly resistant and this is just resistant to wetting. Resistance to water penetration point of view, water repellent fabric permits water passage under extremely external hydrostatic pressure. The hydrostatic pressure if we increase, then some amount of water can penetrate. Waterproof fabric will be highly resistant to it and waterproof breathable fabric also will be highly resistant. Air permeability point of view, usually water repellent fabric is high, here it is 0 here it is also high. Water vapor permeability medium to high, it is 0 here, it is sufficient to high. Comfort point of view sufficient to high, it is very low, it is medium to high. Cost it is low, low to medium it is high. So, you see there are three types of fabrics, water repellent, waterproof and waterproof breathable fabrics, all of them are available and by giving different finishing techniques we can have water repellent or waterproof or waterproof breathable fabrics and they are depending upon the type of use and the cost component or the costing that we are you know we want to want to keep for the final product we have to choose one of them So, water repellent fabrics will keep a person dry over a short duration in rain or intermittent rain. So, water repellent fabric can be used in such situations. So, sometimes the designer has to think ki what is the environment in which a person is going to use it and how long he is going to stay in that kind of environment while he is using it. So, that while you know when the designing process comes for any products, one has to keep in mind that under what condition is going to be used and is it going to be used indoor or is going to be used outdoor. Next, what is the outdoor environment, what is the indoor environment and how long a person is going to be there in that environment while he is using the particular product. Based on all this consideration, we have to choose the raw material. So, therefore, water repellent fabric will keep a person dry over short duration in rain or in intermittent rain. In that situation, water repellent fabric is good enough 
because the advantage with this is that cost is low, so it is cheap. So, you may not need a very high end fabrics. Next is flame retardant, the flame retardant finishes are there, various types of finish, various types of process are there, they are the part of when somebody learns about them in some other course, more details will be available there. So, and the purpose of this finish is to reduce the risk of ignition when the fabric comes into contact with the flame, reduce the risk of ignition. When there is a chance of fire, you have to think that in those situations, such kind of finishes are to be given to the fabric. Thermal treatment, heat treatment is given to fabrics or to many products actually, many technical textile products also finally, after the manufacturing it has to pass through or after weaving or after let us say twisting whatever is the situation, then it has to be then passed through a heat treatment process to stabilize the structure, that is to stabilize the size or it may be sometimes required for property adjustment, we want to adjust the elongation behavior of a fabric. As an example may be let us say car seat belt, car seat belt once it is manufactured, after that most it is made from nylon, after that it has to pass through a heat treatment process where we try to adjust its properties. So, that we give certain amount of stretch and heat combinations for a certain duration of time, so that we get the desired property in the seat belt. Similarly, for crease formation also we need certain amount of some fabrics, we want to as I said earlier also that some creases are required, so we give you know heat treatment is required to introduce crease. Okay. Now, from there we go to coating and lamination is another type of finishing we can say. So, what do we do in coating? Fabric surface is coated with a polymeric layer to enhance its functional performance. There are lots of coated fabrics which are there and there are lot of laminated fabrics also which are there. So, lamination means what? One or more textile substrates are combined using pre-prepared polymer film or membrane by using adhesives or by heat and pressure. So, both laminated fabrics and coated fabrics are available and they have specific end use where we need such kind of fabrics. In the coating process, the benefit is it change the character of the fabric. It can be colored, translucent, opaque, fluorescent, photoluminescent and retro reflective. So, all this sort of properties we can bring into the fabric through the process of coating. It can be antibacterial or you can make a conductive fabric. So, there are the base fabric may be polyester or may be some other type of fiber, you know, fiber can be used to make the base fabric and then on the top of it we give the coating change this character, because that is the property which is more important to us or they are very, very vital for the product and hence such kind of finishing processes are required. So, coating is one technique by which such benefits we can bring. In the lamination properties of the backing material is actually is going to predominant. So, that is we will see some examples when we discuss about the design of technical products where coated fabrics are being used and somewhere where 
laminated fabrics are going to be used. An example, safety vest, hoses, truck covers, hats, gloves, rainwear, and many places are there where we use laminated fabrics. Coated fabrics, some end use are waterproof resistant tarpaulins, coverings, large tents, architectural fabric, parachute fabrics, woven cartons, heat sensitive fabrics, automotive fabrics. So, you see that plenty of use of such products. So, the basic property of the fabric is retained, but then some additional property can be imparted. Therefore, these two techniques are very, very uh, common and these are the various coating materials which are used. Once you, those who have gone through the course of coating and laminated fabrics, they must be knowing this, but these are typical coating materials which are used. And with this, we close this particular session. Thank you.